Shabbat Shalom Chavrim, and believe it or not, we are actually getting to film once again. I uh, went through this charade uh, with YouTube here for the last few days, uh, but <clears throat> uh, it is exciting to get to come to, to, to speak with you this uh, Shabbat, and uh, I'm continuing in the Levitical Law. This time we're going to be looking at chapter uh, 4 and chapter 5. Um, in the Levitical law. We're not going into chapter 6 because it starts into a different area and I want to take that separately. But uh, So we'll try that on the next time that we do uh, the prophecies, the insights that are revealed in the law. The Really incredible nonetheless. Uh, in chapter 4, uh, it begins off, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If... <clears throat> If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any uh, of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which, uh, which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring forth his, uh, for his sin, which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And notice the priest has given a sin offering. And then there's also giving a sin offering for those that do it in ignorance. All right. And he shall bring the bullock into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Now, what's really fascinating, we're going to see this as we really break this down, is that the priest is given a separate sin offering and you're going to find that his sin is in ignorance. And his sin is the ram. It is the male that he is to offer up. And he does it in the door. Why? Because Christ is the door to the sheepfold. So the very ram that they're killing must be killed at the door, representing who they will sin against in ignorance. Verse 5, And the priest that is anointed shall take the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation, and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, sprinkle the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. That's another interesting thing. You know, when Yeshua was uh, killed, he was on the north side of the altar, as we dis discussed in the Levitical laws last week, uh, the sacrifice had to be killed on the north side of the altar, which signified that Yeshua would be killed on the north side, and he was. The temple was rent from the top to the bottom. Now he's sprinkling the blood seven times towards the veil of the sanctuary. And of course, when the, when the veil was rent, what do we have in Revelation? In the book of Revelation, we have the seven churches of Asia Minor. Now, these seven churches, we can always find their nature. As we did back in the time of Paul, they were all there. The nature of each church represented the nature of the people. And the seven times that that blood would be sprinkled would represent the seven spirits that we would see upon those churches. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. As we said, he was the door. What's interesting, though, is some of the blood is to be placed on the horns of the altar. Remember the city of refuge when a man had sinned, but he didn't do it willingly. He killed a man, but he didn't do it really willingly. It was just it was an accident, something that didn't go right. <clears throat> he was given a city of refuge. And if he fled there, he could cling hold of the horns of the altar and cry out for mercy, and he would find it. And this is why that blood was put on the horns of the altar, showing that Christ would atone for his sins. And he shall take off from it a sin offering and the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the um, fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above, um, above the liver with the kidneys and it shall, be, shall he take away. As it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace, uh, peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering. 
Verse 11, in the skin of the bullock, in all his flesh, with his head, and with his legs, and his inwards, and his dung, even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire. And interesting, he's not burned in the tabernacle, where the ashes are poured out and shall be burned. Uh, let's read that again. It's, it's very interesting. And the skin of the bullock and all his flesh with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung, even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn him on the wood with fire where the ashes are poured out shall be burnt. Showing that Christ would be offered as a sacrifice outside the camp not in the altar. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty, when the sin which they have sin against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullet for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Zechariah 12, I believe it is. This is where Israel recognizes that they have sinned, where they will realize that they did wrong. And in Zechariah 12 says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace, and supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. The sin comes to their mind. They recognize what they have done. Just really, really, really sad. So, anyway... Back to Leviticus, verse 14, When the sin that which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock. Shall he be killed before the Lord? Um, notice how he says that there. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock. It was the elders of Israel. Just like when God had, he, or he had Moses take the elders of Israel with him, they went out, they smote the rock that it would bring forth its waters. Not the second time, 38 years later, when they speak to the rock, but this is where the, uh, uh, this was when they first came out. They were about four months into the wilderness journey. And God commands Moses, take the elders of Israel with you out. Smite the rock that it bring forth its water. And the elders of Israel went out there. They judged the rock, Christ being that rock, and he was smitten. And here we see the sin of ignorance. The elders of Israel once again are to place their hands on the head of the bullock. This clearly is the prophecy that the elders of Israel would have, for, have to offer up on behalf of Israel the sin offering for ignorance. And again, we know clearly the scripture says that Israel was blinded in part that the Gentiles might have sight. They had to be blinded in order to, to offer up the sin offering and therefore they had to sin in ignorance. And it's exactly what happened. 2,000 years ago, the children of Israel, the house of Judah that was there, not the children of Israel, but the house of Judah that was there, they ignorantly offered up Christ as a sacrifice. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeshua says himself, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The elders of Israel took and judged him, laid their hands upon him and brought him forth. Why do you think they laid hands on him when he was in the garden? They could come and take him as a prisoner. Because why? The word of God in the Levitical law commanded the elders of Israel to lay hands on that ram's head and to bring him forth. 
my Jewish brethren, it's prophesied in our laws what we would do. It's amazing. Verse 16, And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. Isn't that interesting? The high priest that year said of Yeshua, who is considered, by the way, as Paul said, and it's actually written in the law, you shall not revile the leader of your people. And the priest was considered, the high priest was considered to be the leader of the people. But the high priest came up and said, should we all die or should not one man die for the people? That we all not die? Prophesying, not even knowing what he was saying. And yet it was written here in the Levitical law. So the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. The priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil, as we mentioned about this. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, that is the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out the blood at the, at the bottom of the altar, the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, because he is that door of the sheepfold. And he shall take all of his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priests shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. Yeshua was the high priest. And he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp and burn him as he burnt the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler hath sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord his God concerning things which should not be done and is guilty, High priest here in Yeshua's time was guilty. Or if his sin wherein he hath sinned come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. Again, to offer up Christ. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord, it is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar and the fat of the sacrifice peace offerings and the priest shall make an atonement for him as, a, as concerning his sin and it shall be forgiven him. And if any of the common people sin through ignorance, now this is interesting, any of the common people sin through ignorance. Hmm. His, excuse me. Um, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if his sin which he sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish for his sin, which he hath sinned. A female. The common people bring a female. Now, before I begin to break that down for you as well, let's go ahead. We're going to move on to chapter 5, because it goes into the same thing. And verse 1, And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing is a witness whether he hath seen or known of it, he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast, or a carcass of an unclean cattle, or the carcass of an unclean creeping thing, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanliness of a man, whatsoever uncleanliness it be, that a man shall be defiled with all, and it be hid from him. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth it, then he shall be guilty. And one of these, did not they cry out, 
the children of Israel that day, the house of Judah, they said, did, they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. They cried out with an oath, but they were blind. Yeshua said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They did it in ignorance. And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things, that he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, for a sin which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. Again, a female. And the reason it's a female is because Eve, when she sinned, in the Garden of Eden, she did it in ignorance. She did not sin willfully. She sinned in ignorance. Adam, on the other hand, knew what he was doing. This is one reason why in the book of Romans, I believe it's in chapter 5, it says, by one man sin entered into the world. It wouldn't have come had he not done something willful. And God would have pardoned her for a sin of ignorance. An atonement would be made. But it caused the human race to plummet. It caused the tree of life to be guarded. So therefore their children that would be born would not receive the Holy Spirit as they had received themselves. Verse 7, And he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, which he hath committed two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and to the Lord, one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And he shall bring them unto the priest, who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first, and wing off his, or excuse me, wring off his head from his neck, but it shall not divide it asunder. Now, what's interesting, if you drop down to verse 11, still dealing with the sins that are done in ignorance. It says, but if he not be able to bring two turtle doves, still giving an offering, or two young pigeons, then he that sin shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah, a fine flour for sin offering. He shall put no oil, no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Isn't that interesting? No oil. Yeshua said, you did not anoint me with oil. You did not kiss me welcome. You did not wash my feet as we saw last week, the, the feet that had to be washed when they were being, the sin offering was being made. The feet had to be washed. Or the legs, regel, or glim, however you want to say it, that's the plural. The legs had to be washed. And it's the same thing as the foot in Hebrew. It's one word for both. But he didn't. He didn't have oil. Oil represents the spirit. That's what gives the, you remember, the olive tree. Yeshua is the olive tree. He was the tree of life. And the oil comes from that, which also burns the light. The light that was in the men was the life. The light, the light that came was the life, light in the life of men both man and woman. So this sin that was done in ignorance also typed that the Spirit of God, that tree of life, the olive tree, the oil, the, the Spirit of God would be cut off from the people. So therefore, your offering would be offered without oil, without frankincense. Then shall he bring to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it and even a memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It is a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin, that he has sinned in one of, of these, it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be the priest as a meat offering. Verse 15, excuse me, 14, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, If the soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring... For his trespass unto the Lord, a ram without blemish, out of the flocks, with the estimation by shekels of silver, 
after the shekel for the sanctuary of the trespass offering. I think I know what this implies, but I'm going to save this till next time uh, because I want to pray about it and see how the Lord leads me on. God bless you. I trust this has been a blessing for you and seeing the prophetic insight in the laws of Moses, the law of God given to Moses in the book of Leviticus. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.